It's August 2023 and I've headed to the Dutch city of Delft, a place of pottery, canals and dead royals. The town of Delft was first established around 1075 and within 200 years had been granted city status. Trade and industry flourished in the city, helped by the construction of a canal from the city to Delfthaven on River Maas, providing the city direct access to the sea. Despite a massive fire that destroyed a large part of the city centre in 1536, the city continued to grow and by 1560 had become the second largest city in Holland behind Amsterdam. In 1572, William of Orange took up residence in a former convent. At the time, he was the leader of a growing Dutch resistance to the Spanish occupation of the Low Countries. The following year, helped by the city walls, an attack by Spanish forces on Delft was repelled. In 1581, Delft became the de facto capital of the newly independent Netherlands and was the seat of the Prince of Orange. However, just three years later, on the 10th of July 1548, William was assassinated. The family's traditional burial place in Breda was still under Spanish occupation, so instead William was laid to rest in the city's new church, starting the tradition that lasts to today of the House of Orange Nassau, the modern Dutch royal family, being buried in the church's crypt. 1632 was an important year of births in the city, with both Johannes the Meer and Anthony van Leeuwenhoek being born in the city. The Meer would go on to become one of the great Dutch master painters, Girl the Pearl Earring being perhaps his most famous work. Van Leeuwenhoek, through his refinements in lens making, would be the first person to observe microbes and is widely held as the father of microbiology. Whilst the style had been around since the start of the century, the tin glazed earthenware painted with cobalt oxide that when fired turns to blue, commonly called Delftware, exploded in popularity from the middle of the 17th century. During the 18th century, the economy in the city started to decline and it was slowly eclipsed by its neighbouring cities of Den Haag and Rotterdam. By the start of the 19th century, the city's pottery industry had shrunk to just one factory and that only survived by diversifying into brick manufacturing. The arrival of a railway in 1847 helped to revive the city with a new focus on technology and science, cemented by the establishment of the Royal Academy, nowadays Delft University of Technology. Today, the city is a bustling university town, closely linked to Den Haag and Rotterdam as part of the Rotterdam-Den Haag metropolitan area. The Nieuwe Kirk, or New Church, dominates the market square in the centre of historic Delft. Despite its name, the church dates back to the end of the 14th century. The 109 metre high tower is the second highest church tower in the Netherlands, beaten only by the Domtoren in Utrecht. The church was the second church to be built, with the earlier church now being called the Udzikirk, or Old Church, in the city, with construction starting in 1381 and taking nearly 200 years to complete. The church has been damaged on multiple occasions. In the city fire of 1536, probably started by lightning striking the tower, in the Delft thunderclap explosion of the Delft gunpowder house in 1654, and by another lightning strike in 1872. The church is the final resting place of the House of Orange Nassau, the Dutch royal family, since William of Orange was interred here in 1584 following his assassination, owing to the family's traditional burial spot in Breda being under Spanish occupation. Since then, 45 more members of the family have been buried in the family crypt located underneath the church, with memorials to various members of the family on the church floor above.
less than 300 metres to the northwest of the new church, is the old church. Construction on this church started in 1246 and was still underway when work started on the new Kirk. Over a 25-year period, starting in 1325, a 75-metre tower was built in front of the church. But with insufficient foundations and the wet nature of the land, given it's right on the canal, the tower started to lean even during construction. Further construction has led to the building developing a kink, as builders tried to compensate for the lean that had already started. Renovation and reinforcement work in the early 21st century has stabilised the building, with the centre of the top of the tower now 1.96 metres past the centre point of the base of the tower. If the new church is the burial ground of Dutch royalty, then the old church is the burial ground of Delft royalty, with scientists, artists, navigators and other dignitaries being buried beneath its flagstones. Both the Mir and Van Leeuwenhoek have their final resting places inside the church. Both the old and new church started life as Catholic churches, but with a reformation in 1572, both became Protestant churches. It wasn't until the end of the 19th century before a Catholic church returned to the centre of the city with the construction of a Maria van Jesse church between 1875 and 1882. In contrast to the plain white walls of the old and new church, the Catholic church has gone in full bling with every surface covered in paintings, frescoes and gilting. Despite only being a church, Marie van Jeskirk has a small treasury located off of the main body of the church itself. Whilst the city walls of Delft have long since disappeared, a reminder of where they once were is found in the Moulin de Rus, or Rose Windmill, the last remaining of 15 mills that once stood on the ramparts of the city. Originally a simple wooden post mill dating back to around 1352, the current mill dates to around 1760. The mill has been repaired on a number of occasions, in part to correct the substance caused by the nearby tramline draining groundwater away from the foundations. The most recent repairs, carried out between 2009 and 2012, have solved the problem as the mill now rests on the top of a roof of a railway tunnel constructed during that period as part of a programme to move the station underground and replace the narrow viaduct that ran through the city and had become a bottleneck on the railway network. Perhaps the most obvious feature of the city are its network of canals. The network started with the Ude Delft, the oldest canal in the city, and running roughly north-south through the heart of the old town. It was dug as a way of draining surrounding mining areas into the Shee. A second canal, the Neuve Delft, was dug towards the end of the century, parallel to the original cut, and following on from that, connections between the two were made at either end, and then along the length of the two canals. The canals in Delft are, compared to other Dutch cities, narrower and much shallower than their contemporaries, with water depths only being about 1.5 metres in most places, limiting what craft can journey along them. But this doesn't mean the city can't have canal boat tours, and tours around the network are offered for travel up both the new and old canals, as well as heading out onto the Shee itself.
At the southeastern corner of the old city centre is the only other reminder of the old city walls, with the East Gate or Oosterport still standing, a memory of the fortifications that helped save the city from the Spanish. The gate dates from around 1400 and is a combined land and water gate with fortifications behind the gate itself separating the two. Due to its location on the edge of the city centre, the gate survived the demolition of the rest of the city walls in the 1840s. The gate and remaining stub of city wall connected to it were restored in 1964. From the East Gate, it's a short walk round the corner to the campus for Technical University of Delft and its botanical garden, the Hortus Botanicus Delft. The gardens were originally founded in 1917 as a culture garden for technical crops, a research facility for the university looking at the different uses that plants might have. And still across the site, the potential uses of plants are a key part of their descriptions. The gardens start with an arboretum before moving into general gardens with various themes, including an oriental garden and water gardens. The greenhouses are open for public to look around with various habitats and temperature zones in the different parts of the building. Delft is located on the railway line between Rotterdam and Den Haag, with regular trains to both cities. From Rotterdam there are direct Eurostar services to London, as well as Intercity and Thales services to Brussels and Paris. Trains from Delft to the main Dutch airport at Amsterdam Schiphol require a change of train in either Den Haag or Leiden. Amsterdam Schiphol is one of Europe's major harbour airports home to KLM, with connections across the globe. Music